Puna Senator Russell Ruderman is keeping an eye on pesticide-related bills as they pass through his committees at the state legislature. He is one of the introducers of SB 3095, which would require a vegetative buffer zone around select schools, and which would require the State Department of Agriculture to develop a pesticide drift monitoring study. The hearing was held on February 12th. I know you're, you're a fairly large agricultural operation. I know you said you're maybe in between small and large. You mentioned that you don't use any of these restricted use pesticides. So we were shown pictures of these pests that we simply can't farm without pesticides. How do you, how did you decide not to use pesticides and are you able to control pests without them? Well, first of all, we decided because it's simply because it's not healthy. I think if it was healthy, we wouldn't have people pushing back against, you know, the disclosure. The disclosure. We're just asking for information. So, um, I've heard stories even before today over the years about um, pesticide effects. I personally lived in an area where we got the effects regularly from just the cane burning, and that was bad enough. Um, the other part, of, the other um, reason. Is, um, there's a lot of pressure in the consumer market, in the industry, for more natural, healthy products. I, I, I do think it, that uh, eventually um, we're going to be phasing out things that are not healthy and are not good for us. We have to, because otherwise we're just going to keep getting sicker and health care costs are going to go up. Um, the way we were able to do it is, and, and I believe that there's always a way to uh, mitigate something the correct way. It takes longer and it's harder but it lasts longer and it's, and it's usually healthier and it's usually better and it's usually better for um, the idea of sustainability and being um, being conscientious of what we're leaving for our children and what we're leaving for the future generations. So uh, we have focused on um, the, well, our first, when we did our first demonstration um, crop on this island, on Oahu, on the North Shore that was funded by the uh, federal government, we hired uh, the um, a person who was in charge of the farming at Ma'o Farms, which is an organic farm. And so we learned about cover crops and we learned about how to do weed pressure and we learned about and, and over the years, because um, I personally have been so focused on sunflowers, I've, I've called up um, people in Spain and France and where they where you can drive past thousands of acres of sunflower. And I've asked them about things like pests and, and, and birds and things like that. And basically, it's like you learn, um, you build an economic model where you learn to live with it. You know, they had what they called the bird tax. They said, you're going to lose 5 to 10% of your crop. That's your bird tax. You build that into your economic model. Um, for biodiesel, you and some of the other products we're doing is you learn about crop rotation and you learn about different crops that are um, similar enough that you can farm them with the same equipment, but different enough that you can break pest and disease cycles just by rotation. So those are the things that we've been uh, marching forward with. I think they're, um, you know, we're not smart enough that we develop these methods. So I think these methods have been well known for a long time. A lot of organic farmers are doing them on a small scale, and we're trying to prove that you can do them on a large scale. Um, we're, we've had positive results, but um, yeah, it's, a, it's going to take a lot of a lot of um, time and resources to get there to do 15,000 acres if we're going to grow enough of any biofuel crop to um, warrant another biorefinery, which I think we need in this state. Uh, but the time we put in is worth it because it's healthy, and um, and there's and it's bringing hope to people. It's not bringing frustration and and pain and sickness. It's people are. I mean, if you look at what's done, what just that first few of sunflowers have done for the community. Um, I think we also raised the happiness level on our island about three tenfold. Uh, so, you know, it, it's all worth it. Um, I, I think that what we're asking for in this bill is um, is just information, disclosure, protection for the schools. And, you know, I was on the state school board years ago, as most of you know, so I'm fully behind that as well. I hope we don't wait as long as we waited to figure this out about cigarettes and tobacco. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming over here. Okay. Thank you for your commitment to a healthy form of agriculture. And I have a couple questions for thank the you. Department of Agriculture. If they're still here, please. Thank you for indulging my questions, Chair. 
Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, Senator. So um, we heard, uh, I heard both from your testimony and from uh, Farm Bureau that this is going to harm small farmers. Do you feel this is going to harm small farmers? I don't think you see that in our testimony. Oh, I, okay, what okay, you okay. see is that there'll be approximately 100 farms that would be reporting. I think you have that on the disclosure. I wouldn't be so bold as to speak for the farmers as to whether they're harmed or not. Okay. Um, but they will get folded in. It'll be another cost of doing business. So about 100 farms total, some of them may be small farms. That's what staff, that's the number staff gave me, Senator. Okay. I think I understood from your testi testimony that it's that there are other pesticides in our environment beyond just agricultural pesticides such as uh, roadside parks, termite treatments, and that this is only a relatively small that's, portion. That's in there, Senator, yes. So do you think that if we can't address all of the exposure to heart hazardous chemicals that we shouldn't try to address? No, I wouldn't ones? be so bold as to say that, no. Okay, thank you. Did, did the Department of Agriculture in the state of Hawaii argue that only the state, within Hawaii, only the state has jurisdiction over regulating pesticides? And yeah, that's what the court said. You know, that's the federal government, the EPA, puts an MOU in place with each Department of Agriculture, so all 50 states have one, to, to, to regulate for the EPA. And is it your position that the counties ought not to regulate pesticides because it's the states? You know, that's a legal case. I'm not an attorney, so I wouldn't weigh in, but I know what the courts have said to date. So that's so the position. So as it stands right now, I think it's your position that the Department of Agriculture is the body that regulates pesticides. That, well, that, would, that would be my current understanding okay. from the law. Considering that, that you are the people to do it, the people have tried to have counties do it and other agencies do it, does that require you to regulate them mildly, medium, or comprehensively if you're the only ones doing it? As comprehensive as possible, I think, would be what we'd be asked to do. Thank you. When you look at the range of uh, actions we might take from doing nothing to banning these pesticides or to reducing their amount, or it's, is disclosure and buffer zones an extreme on one way or the other, or is it a moderate position? I think in each of them we'd need to define terms. So, And, you know, we, we've touched on the buffer zones before. Now, if you want a pilot project on buffer zones, which I think is what we take up in this bill, that's certainly a discussion we can have. As you know, it's been pointed out, if we start moving to these other 100 farms, say, and they're required to put in, you know, vegetative buffer zones, you know, the AG's office tells me that could constitute a taking. I'm not going to weigh in on that, but that's the advice I was given in the past. And so, yet somehow California decided to protect all of this. You know, well, I've got somebody researching what California is okay. doing because, as right. you and I have spoken about before, we're following California. We're looking to see what they're doing. You know, so okay. U.S. EPA is not in many people's estimation, stepping up to do the work that's expected. California's EPA does, and so we're looking to see what they're doing. Good, I'm glad, I appreciate that, thank you. Um, do you think that the voluntary reporting that's happening for Monsanto and some of these other companies, do you think that's sufficient? I think it's working for right now, you know, and we can look at going forward if, you know, this, if you, you know, because essentially, and we'll be clear, you know, the legislature will need to tell the Department of Agriculture what it is that they need to do going forward. Okay. So if in your estimation there's a need for that, then we would follow suit. So we've heard, I think it was the Farm Bureau's testimony, they showed us pictures of, of, of bugs and stuff. We've heard that pesticides are necessary for farming. Do you think that statement is true? I think you, like with so many other things, Senator, you have to define your terms, you know, and if I could. Okay. The, you know, it depends on what you're growing, where you're growing it, in what kind of well, let's sequence take the you're growing it. statement that was made. That pesticides it, it would, are required to farm. It would be exceedingly difficult for conventional agriculture to pull off 
you know, successful crops in Hawaii without some support but from that's chemistry. that's definition, because conventional ag agriculture is agriculture that uses chemical pesticides, right? I mean, I that's know, a circular as, as you and I both know, organic agriculture also uses pesticides. I mean, Just not the they're not RUP, but they're using them. They're using chemistry to support the crop. Okay, is organic uh, among the faster growing or slower growing segments of agriculture in our country? I would say it's a, one of the faster growing. Okay, thank you. And thank you for coming all the way over from Oalakai. I know how hard it is. It's an important issue. Thank you. You spoke about your children and your concern for them, which is why I'm asking you this question. It seems like you've done some research about pesticides' effect on people. Obviously, pesticides affect people more with higher concentrations and more frequent use and proximity. Can you comment on whether children are more susceptible to pesticides than adults? Oh, absolutely. And medical literature supports that. Can you, can you expand a little bit? I mean, what have you learned about that? Um, I, I don't want to put you on the spot. If it's not right. good. I, just, I just want to make it clear that... Well, um, medical literature... Um, has proven that it's um, caused developmental delays, uh, it's affected um, their behavior, it's uh, affected them um, neurologically, um, and it, it's caused asthma. Um, I, I know many friends with um, children who um, have been exposed to fugitive dust in Ho'olehua downwind from these fields. and their children now suffer from asthma. Thank you for answering that. I appreciate you coming here to share your concerns. Thank you. Thank on March 2nd, the Senate passed the bill on third reading. It now goes to the State House of Representatives.